Hey, Mike with Nerd Problems Gaming here, the channel where we go through the good and bad of everything nerdy to make sure you spend your time on the best of the best. In today's video, we'll be doing a review and how to play video on Drinking Quest Journey into Draft and the add-on expansion Guzzle Buddies. So let's get into it. So Drinking Quest Into the Draft is a tabletop RPG that is simplified, similar to Dungeons and Dragons, but a little bit easier and more accessible for players combined with a drinking game. And Guzzle Buddies is an add-on expansion that can be added to any of the Drinking Quest games. So we'll cover a bit on both on how to play. So let's jump into that and then we'll go into my full review after you know more on how to play. All right, now that we've got the game out, we'll walk you through how to play the base game of Drinking Quest Journey into Draft, and then we'll go through Drinking Quest Guzzle Buddies as it's kind of an add-on that you can really add to any of the Drinking Quest games. And so starting off, this is kind of how you want to set up the game. It's pretty simple. You'll just organize the cards based on their specific quests that you're going to go through. You can check out the back of the instruction book as well, and it walks you through the order of the quests you wanna go through. Now, one thing to note here is that Kegman Returns, which is kind of a Mega Man based quest, you can play before quest one as an optional quest. And we definitely went through all of these when we played, but you'll see each quest kind of has its own little background and story. So you can know a bit more about what's going on and what's behind the quest. And they're pretty funny. And again, they're kind of a combination of something that happens while you're drinking or partying, maybe a little too hard. And then also kind of nerd topics like Mega Man and Lord of the Rings and different things like that. So it's pretty fun as well to play through the different quests. So first to start, you wanna pick a character that you're going to play as for the drinking quest game. Each character has their own unique stats and abilities. They also have their own unique signature drink and these signature drinks can be used throughout playing each quest. Just read the details on the cards as they'll let you know if they're a one-time thing, if you can use them every quest or how exactly it works. And so what you want to do next is take the character sheet card and just fill out all the information. And so things like your hit points, your strength, self-worth, smarts, and all the other stats are listed on this card, and you'll maintain this as you go through all of the quests. So here's an example, as you can see, it tracks your hit points, the items you receive, the gold you get, your experience, and more. So definitely keep these on hand. I recommend using a pencil so you can erase and update as you go. Now, the goal of the game is to be the player with the most experience at the end of the game. So after completing all of the quests, you wanna be the player that has the most experience and you get this by defeating enemies and being victorious in saving throws. We'll get to those more in a bit. So when it comes to playing the game, it's very simple. Before each turn, you have the option to go to the shop, which allows you to buy various items to help you along the quest. Now each player has their own set of equipment that you can purchase, but then the right side of armor and items, characters can buy those no matter what character they are. And so simply read the details to find out what you can buy and what they do. Another thing to note is that you can sell items back to the shop for half price. So if you're going to upgrade a weapon, for example, you could sell your starting weapon for some extra cash to help push you over the hump to be able to buy the second level, for example. Now, if you've decided to pass on the shop, what you'll do is you'll just simply flip up the first card from the quest that you're on. And so how the cards work, this one is a monster encounter, for example. So you can see it has HP at the bottom, the attack die they roll, the defense they roll, how much gold you get for defeating them and experience for defeating them as well. So sometimes cards have funny text and again, they give you special abilities if you defeat them, just read the cards to see what it says. But this is a combat card, so we'd go through how this works. So the first thing you need to do is determine who goes first. So you the, as the player will control whatever character you're playing as, and then the player to your right will control the monster in a monster attack. So first you need to decide initiative and see who goes first in the battle. And so each player will roll a six sided die. So you roll one of these and the higher number will go first. So in this case, let's say the player went first and we'll look at this player chart and we can see that they have a D8 plus one for their attack. So we'll roll the D8. We got a four plus one, so a total of attack of five. We'll look at the enemy card and see that they have a defense of one. 
So you'll do five minus one is four damage. And this only has two HP, so the monster was defeated. So the player would gain 10 coins and one experience and any other bonuses listed on the card. It would then move to the next player and they would draw the next card in the quest. Now beyond encountering enemies, you might encounter an event card that requires you to perform a saving throw. So here's an example of this and it tells you that you need to throw for smarts to figure out if you succeed or fail. So again, we can go to this character sheet, for example, and their smarts is 12. So I need to roll a 12 or lower to be successful in this saving throw. And so how this works, you would roll all three die at the same time. And if it's lower than 12 in this case, which it is, you would succeed and then you would follow the instructions under success. And this is pretty much how you play the game. You'll just continue to take turns and go around. You'll encounter enemies. You'll have various events where you need to perform saving throws. If you succeed at a saving throw, you get a benefit. If you fail, you get some type of punishment. And another thing to note is that if you ever get defeated by a monster and lose all your HP, you need to chug your drink. Another thing to note though, is that if you have already chugged once, during a specific quest, you then only drink three sips of your drink, not the entire drink. But once you make it to the next quest, you could be required to chug another drink if your character dies. Other than that, you'll continue through all the quests and the player that ends up the game with the most experience wins the game. And that's how you play Drinking Quest Journey into Draft. Now, when it comes to Drinking Quest Guzzle Buddies, this is kind of an add-on that's similar to monster encounters like Pokemon. Now each one of these cards has an additional benefit if you succeed, but also kind of a punishment if you fail. Now each one of these cards can either make your attacks more difficult against monsters or your saving throws more difficult, or it could make them easier depending on what card that, that comes up. And so how this works, you would draw whatever card you're on for the quest and then draw the next card in the Guzzle Buddies and they would work together. So how this works is since this is a monster encounter, we'll basically go and look at this end and see effect on monster. And so this gives them a plus one to their attack. And so on this card, you would have a D4 plus two instead of a D4 plus one. So like I said, these guzzle buddies can sometimes make the encounters more difficult or they can make them easier. But if you win, you always usually get an extra bonus. So in this case, you would get an extra 25 gold and an extra experience plus you get to pick one piece of armor from the shop. So these cards can be very powerful if you're successful in either the monster attack or the saving throw. And so you could play these within every single quest that you go through or just save it for a few, whatever you choose to do. So it's pretty simple to add on to any drinking quest game. But now that you know how to play the game, let's jump into my review. Well again guys, now that you know a bit more on how to play, how do I actually feel about the game? Well, Drinking Quest is a ton of fun. I really enjoy the series. This is my second Drinking Quest game that I've played. And then adding in this Guzzle Buddies expansion was a lot of fun as well. Now this is one of the earlier versions of the Drinking Quest series. Each game really is a standalone game that has its own different quests. And so I like that about it where you can get a bunch in the series. Now, since this is an earlier one in the series, it doesn't have as many characters as some of the future Drinking Quest games do, but I still think it's a lot of fun. I really like the quests in the game. For example, I love the Mega Man quest that's within this game. That was a lot of fun. And I just think the overall humor within the game is fun and the gameplay is fun as well. Now, like I said, it is a simplified RPG, but I actually really like that. I like Dungeons and Dragons, but, but sometimes it feels like it's a big commitment where you really have to dive deep and really create your character and learn all their moveset and think of different ways that you can use it as you play. And depending on what crowd you're playing with, some people might be into that, but your average gamer is probably not that hardcore. Where with Drinking Quest, it's a simplified RPG and I like it that you can just really draw the cards and it dictates what happens and it kind of acts like the Dungeon Master for you. So I think it's a lot more accessible to casual players, but those that do enjoy more hardcore RPGs will like this as well. Also, I think that makes sense since it is a drinking game, you probably don't wanna have it super high level strategic as you're playing. So having that simplified aspect definitely makes sense. I think there's a good amount of replay value to the game as well. You're probably not gonna remember every detail of the game as you play. 
But also, since there is a bunch of different characters you can choose from, that could alter your experience every time you play. Plus, since you shuffle all the cards within each quest, what encounters and monsters and events that come up is gonna be different every time for each individual player, which really creates a new experience. Now, the game itself does have kind of a quest order to it, but I'm sure as you play multiple times, you could switch that up, and that could really change how the game plays out as well. Because each time you're going to be building your character up, getting better equipment, getting items, getting experience and more. So I think the game is pretty balanced. It maybe takes an hour to two hours, depending on how much you're talking and having fun with the game. Maybe getting off track because it is a drinking game. It's probably gonna be some more snack breaks than, and bathroom breaks the longer that you play. But it is a pretty streamlined experience and it is a lot of fun and I highly recommend it. Now, as far as the Guzzle Buddies are concerned, I like that this can be added to any of the Drinking Quest games. I really like that it's kind of Pokemon themed almost, right? Where there's funny monster cards, like a baby Cthulhu, like baby Yoda. There's also a bunch of play on words in it too, where there's a beer holder instead of the beholder. So if you're a D&D &D fan, you'll probably get that reference. And a lot more funny things and references in here as well, which I really enjoyed. I think it does add to the game too, because you're playing these cards alongside of the event event cards and monster cards that you draw within the game. Now, in some cases it does make the encounter harder or you need to roll a lower number for your saving throw to be successful. But then other times it does make the encounter easier depending on what card comes up and the monster or saving throw you need to perform. Now, I think in the beginning of the game when you're playing with these, it does make it harder because your character probably isn't as powerful, but the rewards on these cards from the Guzzle Buddies are usually rather big. So one thing that we found is we got a lot of money, we got a lot of equipment early on within the game, and it made it really hard to lose against some of the monsters as we progressed further within the different quests. I still think it was balanced between us as the players to see who was going to have the most experience at the end. But as we progressed further on in the quests, none of us were really dying that much. And so there wasn't really people having to chug their drinks like I had experienced other times playing different versions of drinking quests without these guzzle buddies. So I think overall it helps you get a lot more items, equipment, experience faster and could prevent you from dying and having to chug. So if you want to play drinking quests where you're drinking more often, I would maybe not use these cards or maybe limit them to one or two of the quests that you go through. But if you want to add this to the game, it's fun either way. You probably just won't have people chugging drinks as often with this add-on. But I did enjoy the gameplay aspects of it a lot. But overall, I would highly recommend checking out any drinking quest game. We have a lot of fun playing them with our friend group and you can play two to four players. And if you wanna add this add-on in, it can make things a little bit more challenging in the beginning, but then it becomes more of a race for experience at the end. But let me know in the comments below if you think these games look fun, if you've played any of the drinking quest games, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to pick up copies of these, there'll be links in the description below where you can do so. And if you guys like this video, be sure to smash that like button as it really helps out the channel. And if you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications to get the latest updates of new nerd videos we put out. And if you'd like to plug into our live streams and let's plays we do on the channel, you can follow us on Twitch at nerdproblemsgaming.com forward slash Twitch. But once again, thanks for tuning in and we'll talk to you more soon.